Minister Sahil al Mazri, great to have you with us today. Sir, I want to get a sense from you. The OPEC Plus grouping had agreed quite a regimented, phased in strategy, um, which is essentially on pause. The Saudis have a unilateral cut. I want your best vision for this phased approach beyond the end of Q1, sir. Well, first of all, uh, uh, Happy New Year to you and to, uh, to everyone who's watching. It's, uh, it has been an extraordinary year to 2020, as you know. And no matter how much you plan, you always have to have that flexibility of adjusting the plans. That's why we agreed in the first quarter to meet on a monthly basis, which is not the norm. Usually, as you know, as a group, we meet we meet uh, in, in, a, in a quarterly and sometimes every six months. But due to the fact that the fundamentals are changing all the time and we're dealing with a pandemic that we never have seen before, I think we are in the recovery year, which is 2021. We need to be, uh, as we are optimistic, we need to be also cautious. So uh, the, the, I think the decision for the first quarter was to meet on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. We decided to go with the phased approach. Then we adjusted that in the meeting, in the recent meeting in, uh, in January, where we decided to, uh, to freeze uh, the growth uh, or, or, or uh, reducing the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the agreed volumes. And, and freezing it, not to introduce the, the 500,000 uh, in February and the 500,000 in March. Uh, we decided to do that because of what we have seen in terms of uh, the second or, or, or the new wave of, uh, of the pandemic. And we will be, I think, uh, the forecast for, the, for beyond the first quarter will be also to wait and see. So definitely we are meeting in March. Uh, to mm -hmm. decide, and at that meeting, we will be we will be deciding on how are we going to take it in the next three months beyond March. So, just in terms of confidence, because because that's what the market's trying to work out at the moment. They're doing the math. They've got the possibility of Saudi supply coming back in April and the OPEC plus overall supply coming back. Are you confident, Minister? that the market could bear up to one and a half million extra barrels by the end of the first quarter, beginning of April? Well, it depends, uh, Manus, on the, on, the, uh, on the vaccine, for example, uh, rollout. There are now plans in many countries to, uh, to go and, and vaccinate uh, a good percentage of the people by the first quarter. And at, if that happens and we see a, a demand recovery, then I think the market can, can absorb it. We are not only looking at, at, the, at the supply and demand balance, we are also working on the inventories, the extra uh, inventories buildup that we have seen during 2001. We are also targeting to reduce that to a normal level, which, is, uh, which will give confidence also on the, on the, uh, to, the, to the producers. So that is also another angle that we are, we, are, uh, okay. we are working with. Let's just talk about the inventories, Minister, because again, we're all talking about the five-year average. I thought we'd left it behind, but no, we're back on the five-year average. Um, to get the inventories down, Minister, what is your strategy? Is it less exports to the USA and the OECD? Well, every country has its own markets, as you know, uh, Manus. And we are not, uh, our role as a group now, a bigger group yes. of, of, of producers, is to balance the market and ensure that the, uh, the market is balanced and incentivizing the investors to continue investing. We don't want to lose uh, investors during this extraordinary year and the recovery year, because those volumes will be required. We all know in a year, two years, or, or, or at the end of this year, hopefully, we will be back, or, or even in 2022, we will be back to where we were in 2019 in terms of, uh, of demand. 
and uh, can you balance the market? Do you expect to balance the market, Minister, this year in 2021? I'm more optimistic. Uh, I mean, uh, than uh, than the uh, the numbers because uh, because I'm confident that this group will uh, will continue working hard in ensuring mm -hmm. that we are balancing the uh, the the market faster than uh, than what we anticipated, and we have seen we have seen the recovery. I think better than anyone was expecting. Uh, in the first, and as we are going in the in the first month of the year, I'm I'm optimistic that by the end of the year or beginning of next uh, of 2022, we will see uh, we will see that balance. Now, your old friend Fatih Birol has spoken to us overnight, sir, and he said a big chunk of American shale will be profitable at the current levels. Do you expect to see more shale supply given the price action in the market? Well, I think I think we have all of the producers need to be careful, uh, not to uh, not to over flood the market. Mm -hmm. If if any if anyone do that, then we will the prices the prices will will, will suffer and the investors. Will, I'm not worried about the prices per se, okay. because the prices are, are are relative to the time. But I'm more I'm more uh, concerned about the level of investments that all the investors need to, to put. I think, I think when it comes to the, uh, the shale oil, uh, there has been challenges. They have been facing a very challenging year during 2020. From the investor's point of view, uh, it's, not, it's not going to be easy to just, to, to just go and build production, not knowing that uh, and, and seeing the inventory levels where they are today. So I think, I think we have to be they have to be cautious, and uh, I'm glad that we have always that dialogue between us and them. And uh, don't uh, forget that the U.S. have contributed to the cut uh, during the uh, in April and, and and in May when we when we met with them. So I think I think we have to be to appreciate what the U.S. producers have done, the sacrifices that they put to balance the market at a very difficult time. I think they are wise. Not to uh, not to jump the gun and overproduce uh, during the recovery year. So it, it, you've cautioned now. You sent a message here to the market about look, don't flood this market. But the discussion with the people that I talk to uh, say that Saudi Arabia's unilateral action, Your Excellency, opens the door perhaps to less compliance. No, I don't think that is fair to say to Saudi Arabia. I think Saudi Arabia have been, uh, and especially Prince uh, Abdelaziz, have been instrumental in, uh, in, in this new rule, which is the compensation. And, and we have seen uh, countries uh, uh, compensating the volumes that, that they have not complied to. Uh, and, and, ye and month on month, they are, they are doing their best. So. I am optimistic that uh, that uh, the the, the co-chairs will continue their role. We are discussing the conformity in the JMMC, and we are a member. Uh, and I would like to uh, to uh, emphasize what UAE have done. UAE have uh, continued uh, to uh, to uh, uh, become uh, more than 100% uh, compliant, and and we are encouraging others. And and all of the messages we got from the different ministers and those countries, they mm -hmm. are committed and they assured the JMMC that they are committed and they are doing their best to, to, uh, to bring, uh, to, to reduce those, those barrels that were uh, overproduced. The UAE, Saudi and Iraq all managed to raise prices to Asia. I want to get a sense of how robust that demand side of the equation is geographically. Well, uh, uh, as you know, uh, China has been the first to, to show signs of recovery and demand, and uh, and we are uh, we are working on ensuring that that the uh, the confidence between the the uh, the suppliers and and uh, and the uh, demand countries are there. We are in talk with them. So the idea now is to ensure that we are 
we are producing at a, a, a phased manner to cater for that demand increase. And uh, it's not easy to, uh, to predict uh, after what we have seen in, 20, in 2020. So building that into, into the account and looking at the fact that, that for example, uh, Chinese uh, major uh, uh, oil companies are now investors. So they sit with us, they are producing here in Abu Dhabi, and they are part of the producers' uh, club in, in, in that sense. So I'm, I'm confident that, that in Asia, whether it's China or India or the rest of the countries, mm -hmm. uh, we, are, uh, we are in more talk, and hopefully we will balance that, that demand increase in a more predictable way than, uh, than before. Minister, can we talk about the, the big relationship, the OPEC plus relationship? We've been through many dramatic meetings in Vienna uh, and virtually. Can you give me your outlook for the OPEC plus relationship beyond the expiry of the pact? Well, first of all, this relationship, I've been saying for years that this, that my view on this relationship, it's to stay not, this is not a permanent, uh, this is not a temporary relationship. This is uh, hopefully a permanent relationship. Uh, we have seen mm -hmm. all that uh, the part of the learnings that we, we carry on 20, uh, 2021 after 2021 is yep. the fact that more producers need to work together during difficult times. The level of confidence that we build among ourselves, working together now for years, is, uh, is more assuring that we will continue working in the future. We've got 12 meet well, 11 more meetings to go, Minister, we understand, is what's on the slate. I just want to get a sense of cohesion as we jump into 2021, because there's a three-way split, isn't there? There's those who stood pat, there's Saudi that cut, and there's token rises for, for Russia and Kazakhstan. Is the cohesion robust within the OPEC Plus Alliance? I think it is. We 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 all agreed uh, that uh, the, due to the uh, to the to the uh, winter uh, months in Kazakhstan and in Russia, it has been difficult, and they have demonstrated that it's very difficult for them to uh, to not to increase the production to cater for that for that demand increase uh, locally, and that led of, that all of us uh, agreed to uh, to give them. Uh, is lack for those for those two months, and and I think the uh, Saudi Arabia uh, general uh, with their generosity uh, have uh, put enough volumes to uh, to compensate for that. So if you look at the deal, if they were in versus the deal we have now in terms of cutting production, we're mm -hmm. significantly above uh, the the level of of uh, of the cut that that both Kazakhstan and Russia have to, have to put in. So I think the, the, the trust among us, the, co the cohesiveness of the decision-making mm -hmm. have been there, and uh, we have done it all uh, convinced rather than pushed. So we talked about balancing the market. I want to get a sense from you in terms of when can we expect OPEC to recover perhaps the market share that it, it gave up last year? Well, uh, now the focus is on the balancing of the market. We're not okay. looking at it from a market share point of view. Uh, we are the lowest uh, cost producers uh, as, as, uh, as OPEC countries and, and many of the OPEC plus as well. So we know that for a fact that when situations are normal, uh, we, uh, we can easily get to the market share uh, that is, that is the, that that is uh, normal for, for this group. I'm not worried to tell you the truth, uh, Manus, about the market share now. We are, okay. we are at an environment where we'll, we either balance the market, incentivize investors to continue investing, and assure ourselves two years, three years from now, we have enough, enough hydrocarbon uh, and enough supply, or we don't do it. If we, if every country is looking at its market share, then we will not, we will not, we will not balance the market. And, and UAE is an example. Uh, our, we have an installed capacity of more than 4.2 million barrels, but look at us uh, working with the group, 
and, and cutting significantly from that volume. Minister, let's square away one of the biggest issues. You're about to launch your Murban uh, contract, the Futures Exchange. A lot has been written. To make a success of that over the next number of years, to, to allow it to come to fruition, Minister, do you think about a world of where the UAE might need more flexibility, perhaps outside the OPEC relationship, to make that a success? Well, first of all, uh, Manus, we look at uh, every country in this deal, they look at their, at their benefits. Uh, and, and, and I think uh, we are convinced that our benefits is with the group. Uh, so we are committed. We're, we are an active member of the group. The future, of course, will carry on surprises, as, uh, as you know, in this, in this field. I'm confident that this investments that we put uh, and the type of oil and the efficiency improvement that, that uh, ADNUC have done will enable us to compete and will enable us to, to put those volumes because there will be needed. So Many, you remain squarely inside the family? Yes, I think, I think even, even, uh, even the whole group, not only UAE, uh, will uh, will be able to uh, to uh, to tap into the market and put those volumes because at the end of the day, it's it's the cost of production that you need to work on, and it's the demand and, and the demand recovery uh, beyond once we are we are off this uh, this pandemic uh, is uh, is way above uh, what we are producing today. Minister Sahila al Mazrui, we wish you well with the Gulf Intelligence uh, Forum. Enjoy, sir. We thank you for your time, Your Excellency. Thank you very much, and uh, I'm very glad to uh, to participate to the uh, as part of the Global UAE Energy Forum 2021. And thank you very much for the coverage.